Hello, welcome. Today, I'm gonna be showing you my current go-to everyday makeup routine. And I think what makes this so special is the fact that I spent two years making YouTube videos, makeup videos specifically, and then I took a year off. And what I found were there were several products that just like did not make the cut once I wasn't, you know, buying makeup every single week. And there were a lot of products that did stand the test of time. So these are the products that truly, truly, like with a year away from the beauty community to think about it, I would 100% keep and have become my daily everyday staples. Now, this is a, like I said, 10 to 15 minute routine. It's obviously gonna take longer because I'm gonna be talking you through it. But for me, this is something I sit down and I am able to knock it out 10, 15 minutes max, specifically because I generally have eyelash extensions. So I'm not having to do, you know, false lashes or mascara that does cut down some time. But I'm just gonna kind of walk through kind of my tips and tricks on how I have come to this everyday makeup routine, how I kind of pick the things that make the cut and go into my everyday makeup bag. This is the bag where I keep everything and only the things that are like my daily staples. Everything else has its own like drawers in my closet and that's where I go to play. But when I need to like get going in the morning, this is the bag that I go to to get my face done and to get it done in a timely manner because everything's there. I'm not looking for anything. I'm just pulling out the stuff I need. All right, so let's dive into the makeup. I'm gonna show you my everyday makeup look. As always, I'm gonna start with my little favorite no crease hair clips. These ones are actually new. They're sparkly rhinestone ones. I don't need them as much on this side, but I kind of feel like that side gets left out. So I'll throw one in there just so it doesn't feel like off-centered, off-balance. I've already washed my face, I've done my skin prep, and I've moisturized, and I'm gonna start with kind of like my primer step, which for me, most days when I'm doing my makeup, okay, like almost every day when I'm doing my makeup, is this glow screen from Super Goop. This is my favorite. I do my two fingers. Thank you, Gwyneth Paltrow, for reminding us all how not to put on sunscreen. Gosh, that was like forever ago, right? I think I was, Still like, I think it was like back before my break from YouTube. So I love this stuff because it's my sunscreen and it's a primer kind of all in one for me. It has just enough grip to it that I feel like it's really great under my makeup. It's great under all of the foundations that I like to use. I haven't found a foundation of mine yet that I like that I don't like with this primer uh, or excuse me, sunscreen. But again, we're using it as a primer as well. You know, guys, I don't pull my sunscreen down that far because I'm gonna be honest, as white as my neck is, I am almost convinced it's never actually seen the sun. I'm pretty sure my face is like completely protecting it. All right, we have a new sheriff in town. A new bombshell has entered the villa. Whatever you wanna say, my holy grail luminous silk has been dethroned, not kidding. It has been dethroned by this bad boy right here. This is the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation from Hourglass. I wear the shade three. Surprisingly, finally a foundation where I'm not like, well, it's still kind of one of the lightest shades, but I'm not the lightest shade. And the reason why is because the undertone on this bad boy is a nice neutral. If you're fair skinned and neutral like I am, you know that it's kind of hard to find foundations that don't pull pink when they're very fair. So this color selection for me, really, really great. My favorite way to apply this one is Beauty Blender. I absolutely adore the way the Beauty Blender looks on it. I kind of just like went in a lot heavier than I normally do, but you know what? It happens. That's why I was wondering when I started, you know, I took a break for a year and I was wondering like, is filming YouTube videos, is that act similar to the act of riding a bike? Like, do you just always remember it? And to a certain extent, yes, so far, I don't feel super off, but you know, I did just go on with far more foundation than I normally do off the bat, but you can see it doesn't matter. It blends so beautifully. You really have the time you need. I wouldn't say this is like slow to set, but it is kind of more of like a medium time. This is not like a fast setting, fast drying foundation. So you have the time that you need to work with it, which I really, really appreciate. Now I go down kind of my neck. We're gonna work on that when we use powder and bronzer and a little bit here, but you'll see it's just such a beautiful finish. Now, 
I have been most days doing my contour under my foundation. Occasionally I'll do it this way, but I really wanted to do this foundation first just so you guys can see it because I feel like it's so beautiful on the skin. If you're someone like me and you have like fairly decent skin, you don't have like a ton of skin problems. I mean, I may make it like some texture and congestion in here. I love this foundation because like I said, it's a medium coverage, but when I use like a wet sponge, I can still see freckles. And I love that. I love still being able to see dimension to the face and life to the face because I am so pale. It's funny, I was going back and watching one of my favorite videos I ever did. It was a video about um, just like my hacks for people with very pale or fair skin. I'll put it up here in the corner for you guys if you wanna watch it. I was thinking about that video and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to go back and watch it. So I did. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, that is definitely one of the best tips I've ever given is that if you are very fair, you definitely want to make sure that, you know, you've still got dimension on your face because I have found if you go too opaque, you go too heavy handed full coverage, you kind of just get flattened out and we end up looking like, you know, a moon face, regardless of your, your facial structure. All right, next up, we're going to go in with contour. Now this is my favorite contour shade right now. This is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. I love this stuff. I wish they made only this one because I never use this top part. I just never touch it. So this is Intensity 0.5. I have this Rose Ink Beauty Brush. Oddly enough, this is one of the few products from Rose Ink that I actually liked that I tried. But like any like angled brush like this is like would work. And I just kind of stipple and I go just a little bit above. And that's just kind of been what I've been liking to do. Again, sometimes I do it under my makeup. Sometimes I do it over my makeup. If I'm doing it under my makeup, I'll be a little bit more intense with it. But since it's going over my makeup, I'm kind of being a little bit softer with it. And that's the great thing about this brush is it has, you can see two links of brush of bristles. So there's like shorter and, and top, kind of what I think we call duo fiber, although I'm not sure this is a true duo fiber. And then I'm gonna get my jawline because I just wanna chisel that jaw a little bit. It's not quite as defined as it normally is because mama just had a baby. Woohoo! Ta-da! And then the last place that I'm gonna like contour contour is I like to get it a little bit in my hairline, but I just kind of go here and here. My face is apparently a mix between a heart and an oval. It's the funniest thing. I actually got my face shape analyzed and literally geometrically, mathematically speaking, it's not a true oval and it's not a true heart. It's like a mashup of the two. So I'm sure lots of people have, you know, that thing where <laughs> there's, you know, their face shapes, I mean, they're not all gonna fit into like one perfect exact science, but I kind of just like to hit this part and this part and kind of accentuate uh, the hardness a little bit. So I do that and then I kind of usually blend this out with a beauty blender just to soften everything up because I don't like anything super harsh and I'm just not trying to have, you know, a ton of color deposited, especially the fact that it's winter and I'm very pale. It just doesn't look very natural if there's too much there. Always taking care when I blend to kind of just like pat it in rather than swiping so I don't move that product around. Now, the easiest way I said at the beginning, I would tell you the easiest way for you to make sure that you have this routine or your makeup routine down to like 10, 15 minutes is to have all your products organized. I now just exclusively put in this like gold bag. I'll link where I got it below because I honestly can't remember now, but it's a really nice makeup bag. It's got a big pocket and then it's got all these like places for the brushes, which is really cool. I just put like my go-to everyday stuff in this bag and that is the only thing that lives in this bag. And that is the only place that my everyday, you know, ride or die products go because that way they're there. I can just reach for them. I'm not looking around for stuff. I'm not losing stuff. Let's be honest, when you have as much makeup as I do, that can happen. So we don't want that to happen. Again, this is just another brush from Rose Ink. And I'm gonna use this one for my nose contour, which I like to do right before my 
concealer because I'm not gonna blend it out until I get to my concealer. I like to do, I kind of go here where my brows are gonna start here in a minute. Once I draw in the inner corners, I have a fun anecdote to tell you about that. Some bad things happen to my eyebrows. <sighs> it's sad, it's very sad. Uh, and then I just like to hit a little bit right here. That's it. All right, so I put this on and then I go on with my concealer because I'm actually gonna use my concealer. That's part of the step. So I'm gonna kind of clean that up. I'm just gonna hit along here because I don't want to make my nose look bigger and the lines look a little bit thick. So I do that. I put this on my eyelids because this is gonna be my eyebrow primer. Primer, I don't know where that came from. Uh, a little bit here, a little bit here because I do like to pull my eyes. I have my eyes just barely turn up a little bit and I like to accentuate that. So that's why I do do this little gizmo. I saw on TikTok recently, someone was like, oh, don't, don't do this. Why are you trying to accentuate this part of your, I like it, okay? I like it. And so that's what I have to say to you guys. If there's something you really like about makeup, it doesn't matter if it goes out of trend. If you like it, do it. So I do a tiny little line and I like to hit up my nose and then I do this tiny little triangle still and I hit up my cupid's bow and I just wanna accentuate or kind of pull out that little, I have like a little dimple on my chin. So I like to put a little bit of concealer there just to kind of like remove that shadow so it's not quite so like dimply. I mean, it's cute, but I'm not trying to have like that much of a butt chin. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm gonna use my beauty blender. I use the pointy end now to blend all of this out. Again, tapping. I'm not trying to pull a lot of product. And if I am trying to pull product, I do so just by like tapping, not by swiping because that'll get you into some trouble. I just do like one side of my nose at a time. And I find that that works just perfectly fine. That's the great thing about, I think this contour is it blends so well that I can do that on my nose. I mean, it's just so soft. So you really can work with it everywhere and it's gonna, it's gonna work with you. It's gonna work for you. And that to me is what luxury beauty should be. If you have a luxury beauty product that you're having to finagle with, you guys know how I feel or you might remember how I feel. If you have a luxury product, a high-end product, and you're having to like finagle with it, it's not worth the price point. Like to me, like that's just not worth it. If you're paying for luxury beauty, you shouldn't have to be finagling it and you shouldn't need a masterclass to get it to work. That's just how I feel. I know a lot of people will be like, oh, if you did this, it would work, or you need to do it like that, or change this technique. I know that's a lot of people's reaction when uh, people on YouTube say they don't like a product, but to me, it's like, you know what? If it doesn't fit the way I do my makeup, that's okay. That's just not the product for me. There are so many products out there, you guys. Why waste our time on ones that don't work? So we've got this blended in, and you got, just look how soft this blend is. It is so, soft even down here like i'll get it a little bit and we're gonna again blend with powder in a minute but this blend is so soft and like i said this is gonna seem like it's more complicated or takes more steps than it does or would take more than 10 to 15 minutes this is exactly how i do my makeup when i have 10 to 15 minutes <laughs> so i promise like it's not that drawn out of a thing because these are products that are really easy to work with and they don't take a ton to blend out Okay, next I'm gonna do my eyebrows before I go in with any powder. I just wanna give everything a minute before I go in with any powder. I told you guys something crazy happened to my eyebrows. All right, so I use those like little tiny face razors to, you know, clean up like my unibrow and just kind of clean up the edges of my brows. That's really all I do to them and it really works for me. But I think that one night in like my sleep deprived state, I saw my eyebrows and I was like, oh my God, I really need to clean those up. And I went to do my unibrow and I think I wasn't thinking straight and I just went too far in and you can see I removed more of my eyebrow than I meant to. So normally my eyebrow hairs go to here and here. And as you can see, these are just baby hairs that are just now growing back in. And that's because I accidentally razored them off. It's a whole thing. It's almost as bad as the time I cut myself with the little tiny face razor. And I tried to lie to my husband and tell him that like I got a paper cut on my face because I was like super embarrassed. <laughs> it was a whole thing. Anyway, let's do some eyebrows. All right, so I still start back here at the end where it is you know, more 
is meant to be darker and I do my tail first. Just tiny short hair like strokes that kind of just mimic how my natural eyebrows go. And I forgot to tell you, but this is, this has been a holy grail for years. If you've been around, you know. This is the Dior Brow Styler in blonde. I love this. And the reason I've been using it lately is because since I accidentally shaved this part off, I need the most hair-like pencil I can find. And this has the most hair-like hair -like strokes for me. I swear, sometimes making YouTube videos is just like tongue twisting. All right, so when I get to this end here, I'm just kind of trying to like make little hair strokes. And then if they don't look super natural, what I do is I take the spoolie end of this, dig it in and I kind of like shimmy it up. And that's how I get it to be the way I want it to be. And that's pretty much the way I want it to be. So we're good. All right, you guys, I've said it before, I'll say it again. If your brows don't look right, my suggestion is just to keep brushing through them until they look presentable. That's what I do, that's what I go with, and it works just fine for me. Um, it's a little more readier than I like, so I'm just gonna take my beauty blender that I had and just kind of not putting anything else on it. I'm just using the excess from when I did my foundation. And now I'm happy with my brows and we can move on to eyeballs. Before we do eyes, I do like to go ahead and do my powder first. All right, another trick of just keeping things quick when you don't have a lot of time, keeping it down to 15, 10 minutes is brushes that do double duty. This is one of them. I use this brush for so many things. It's expensive, but it's worth it. It's from Hourglass. It's got two sides and you're gonna see how I use them. So I got my powder here. This is the Airbrush Flawless Finish, shade one from Charlotte Tilbury. I just haven't found anything better for me. I have a couple things I'm gonna start trying. I'm excited about that. Just a couple things I wanna try, a couple powders that I'm like, okay, let's try them. Let's see how they stack up, specifically for the under eye. I'm looking at the Givenchy one, but we're gonna see. So I just grab the tiniest bit on this narrow end I go under my eye. I know some people don't set their under eyes anymore. I still do. I actually am gonna set my entire face here in a moment. But first I do the under eye part and then I do the actual lid with powder just to give myself a nice little base. And then I'm gonna go in with eyeshadow. And you guys, my favorite eyeshadow palette that I discovered during my hiatus and I am so obsessed with it, is this one from Lisa Eldridge. This is the Vega palette from her eyeshadow palettes. These colors are like meant for my eyes. <laughs> they are so good. They go so well with my skin tone. I'm just obsessed. So I have that little sprinkling, that little dusting of translucent or well, not really translucent, but it's almost translucent because I'm that pale of my Charlotte Tilbury powder. And I'm gonna go in with this shade here. This is French gray. And this is such a good crease shade for me. I'm using a Sigma diffused crease brush. This is a number E38. Had this brush forever, love it. And I'm gonna go in and I'm going to just follow the natural line of my, my orbital bone here, my natural crease um, right here. It's right here. I go a tiny bit above. So like if I look here, this is where I'm going. I'm not gonna follow the little skin fold. I'm actually gonna follow the bone because that's just what looks best on my eye. If you've never tried it, highly suggest it. So I start here because this is where I want the majority of product to be. And then I blend in. Always just start where you want more product to be and then blend to where you want it more diffused. So I want more product on the outer edge and less there on the inside, so. That's what I do. All right, that's there. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a MAC 217. And I'm gonna take this darker shade. This one is Turbulence. It's another matte. It's basically a gray brown, slightly darker than the first color that we used. And I'm gonna put this in the actual, like, where the line is, doing the same 
kind of thing that I did with the last eye or the last shadow, starting on the outside and then bringing it in so that most of the product is concentrated on the outside of my eye. That's just the shape that I like. So see, for this one, I literally am going into the skin fold rather than up above. I'm just trying to create dimension in my eye and kind of make like the eyeball part pop out. These shadows blend so, so, so beautifully. I am so excited. I was so excited. <laughs> I still am when Lisa Eldridge announced them and I just have not gotten over them. They are so nice. I gave a bunch of them away for Christmas presents. I literally looked through, picked which sh like palettes um, from her collection, which color stories looked best for my closest family and friends that wear makeup and gave those as Christmas gifts because they are so, so beautiful. All right, so the second one's on there. I just go back in with the first one and just kind of blend to make sure my edges are out. Again, this is like very soft everyday makeup for me. This is not anything super dramatic, but this is a look that I enjoy wearing like daily. I never have found an occasion for which I don't find this to be flattering on me. So I'm just excited because I feel like that's what an everyday makeup look should be. It should be something that just looks really great on you. Every day, you can just pull it out. You don't have to think about it. And that's what this look has become for me. All right, so the last shade we're gonna use is this one right here. It's Supernova, it's a luminous. It is so beautiful. It's like the perfect like Kava champagne shade. I am obsessed with it. It goes on beautifully and it looks like it would have fallout. It doesn't. It's just a beautiful lid shade. So I go on and I pack that right there on the lid. And I do all over the lid with this. I just find it to be so, so beautiful. It's just, it's chef's kiss gorgeous. I mean, look how bright, it's just gorgeous. It's bright, it's beautiful. I've got to mention to the eyes. That's all I'm really looking for in, a, in an everyday makeup look. I will take a pencil brush usually, this is MAC 219, and just pick up that first shade, the French gray, and run it right under my under eyes. I go all the way from edge to edge or corner to corner, excuse me, corner, all the way to where my lashes end. I'm not pulling it like into here. We're just gonna stop right where my little lashes end. And when I say little lashes, I do mean little lashes because I have tiny, tiny lashes. I have lash extensions usually, I, I actually still do, but these are Lashify. These are like the ones you do at home, which I was so skeptical skeptical about. And I think though, I'm gonna have to do a whole like video review on them because I was incredibly surprised by them and by how easy they were to master. So um, right now, because I am nursing, I don't go to get my lashes done. So what I've been doing is doing these uh, little Lashify and they are, amazing. So I don't put any mascara on the top, but I do like to use a tiny bit of brown on the bottom. And for that, I like the CoverGirl Lash Blast volume. And I just barely touch them. I don't really want much. I just want the tiniest little bit so that, you know, you can tell there are lashes there because again, my lashes are so, so short. For me, black would be way too harsh on my lower lash line just because of how pale I am and my coloring. So I do like to use a nice little brown because it's just a, like kind of like a barely there thing. We're just, you know, barely touching them. All right, now is the part where we're gonna blend everything together with blush and bronzer. This is like the quickest part of my makeup where I'm like, okay, hard part's done. We're like in the home stretch here. I take just the tiniest bit of uh, powder. I even like tap it off and then I just kind of set all of my face just so that it's gonna last just barely barely i don't and you can see there's still shine we're not trying to like mattify everything we're just trying to set and then on my neck i kind of like swirl that's the part where i just kind of go like crazy with it because again this is a really great foundation match for me you see like it matches my chest well but my neck is so, so, so pale. And if you are a fellow pale person, you probably know that it's just, if you were to try to match your neck, like if I were to try to match my neck with foundation, 
I would just be wearing the little white panel and the Makeup Forever palette. Oh, but a picture, you remember that? That would just be what I would have to put on my face to get the nice match. And that's not what we're trying to do in life at all, okay? Not what we're trying to do. So we're gonna go in with my favorite blush. I cannot stop wearing this blush. Like you will have to pry this from my cold thin hands. I don't know how anything will ever replace it. It is the perfect color for me and the formula is amazing. This is the Cheeky Posh. It's a cream stick, cream blush stick from Victoria Beckham Beauty. And this is in the shade Major. And I just love to start right here. This is like my high point where I want most of it. And then I do a tiny bit here like this, and then I'm gonna blend it in. And then I do the same thing on this cheek. Most of it here, and then tiny bit here. And you might think this is a lot, but this stuff just blends out so, so beautifully. It's so buildable. And I've talked before about how I love buildable products. I think they're just the best because that means you can go as little as you like to as much as you like. And I love that. I love the subtlety of it. And I love having that control. So to blend with this one, I'm patting down but I do just pull the tiniest bit towards the hairline, always like up and towards the hairline, just so that I'm lifting my cheeks and also so that I'm blending that blush into the hairline so that it does look like a really natural flush. And again, this shade is just so, I find it to be so beautiful. I think it's just such a natural flush for me. If you have a similar skin tone to me, this might be a really good one for you. And then see, I want a little bit more like right here. So I'll just do a little bit more right here. And this is what I tend to do. I tend to do like kind of two passes and that gets me where I wanna be. So that's got me where I wanna be. And because I am the tiniest, tiniest bit extra, I do double blush. And of course I fell in love with like everyone else, the rosy glow in pink from Dior. I was like, I thought I was wrong for a minute. I'm like, how would I think I'm wrong? I've been wearing this every time I do my makeup for at least six months now. <laughs> So again, using the same brush from Hourglass, I take this end and I just kind of go over my blush with like a very light little layer. And that gives me a double blush, rosies it up just a tiny bit. It means I'm gonna get some longevity out of that blush. And sometimes I just do a little bit on my nose for the heck of it. The last step of like my color for my face before all right, we're in the home stretch. We have just bronzing and lips left. I love this ambient lighting bronzer. This is from Hourglass. This is Luminous Bronze Light. This is so beautiful and soft, and I love that it's light reflective. Again, this brush is gonna do double duty. I'm gonna swirl it in there a little bit, top it off, and I just kind of barely go around. I kind of like to get my neck, kind of. I definitely like to get my neck, again, because I just want everything to kind of seamlessly blend down into my neck. And then again, I kind of just am getting like the out, outer edges of my face. I'm not going, you know, up under where I did the contour. I'm just getting those outer edges of my face to soften them up a tiny bit. I just feel like this pulls everything together as far as the face colors. Now it's time for my favorite part, lips. This lip liner has taken over my life. This is the Bare Minerals Mineralist Lip Liner in the shade Charming Pink. I got this six months ago and have been obsessed with it. It is just the perfect like rosy pink for me. I love it, love it, love it find it to be just, it goes so well with all of the lip colors that I like, like the lipsticks, but uh, it also goes really well just putting this on and then like a lip oil or a lip balm. It just is my lips, but better. So this is like my shade. I line my lips. A great tip I recently learned is to not go corner to corner. So I go right here and I just ignore the corners. See, I'm going like right there and completely ignoring the corners. And then I'm doing the same thing on the top lip. I'm gonna like follow it, but completely, completely ignore the corner basically. Just take it down. If you're starting from here, see there's the corner rather than starting from it. Just from right there. And then I follow my natural lip line. Hmm. I always rub it in a little bit. It's just like habit, I can't stop. <laughs> 
then then my absolute favorite lipstick for oh my gosh about a year and a half now is this is the gucci brilliant formula so it's like their glossy formula and this is in the shade call it a day it is so perfect for me i love it it's a nice little rosewood and i love that it has some shine to it so i throw that on top and then i'm done with my lips and all that I really have left to do is spray my face. I've been using the Airbrush Flawless Finish Setting Spray from Charlotte Tilbury. I've been using this since I got it. It's just grown on me and now I don't have another setting spray that I would like to use. This is the one for me. <sighs> just let that soak in. So glowy. All right, that's it. This is the finished look. We're done. Again, this is just, for me, this is the perfect like go-to everyday look. I feel like I can wear this to any occasion, anything I'm doing day to day, and it just looks really nice, really polished, really put together. Sometimes I, you know, just with the eyes, I will kind of skip those all together and just throw a little bit of bronzer on or something. But for me, I find this to just be such a healthy, beautiful look, and all the products work so well. They're so easy to work with and just, I don't know, they just all blend so beautifully. It just makes it a pleasure and kind of makes it like mindless for me to do my makeup. So on like a day-to-day -day basis when I'm not trying new makeup, this is my go-to. And again, I keep it all <laughs> in this one place so that I'm not searching around for brushes. I'm not searching around, you know, for, oh, where is that lip liner that I liked? Where's that? Where's this? It just makes everything go so, so much faster. And I didn't used to be like that. I used to kind of have my makeup everywhere. So I don't know, I'm curious to know, are you someone that has like an everyday go-to tried and true makeup look? Or do you kind of like to switch it up every day? Are you a creature habit like me? Or <laughs> are you a little bit more um, adventurous and, and trying new things every day? I'm very curious to know. I'm so glad that you spent a little bit of time with me. I've missed you guys so much and I'm just, Again, eternally grateful to be back. Thank you so, so much for all the amazing comments on my last video, my kind of comeback video. I just, I'm so glad to be here, uh, especially with you. So thank you. I hope you have a great day and take care of yourself. I will see you next time. Toodaloo.